Hey, I'm Doug Hamp. Thanks for joining me. Uh, make sure to subscribe and like this if you could, and if you want to, it would be great if you could share it too. I'm over at the Christian Science Monitor. They're discussing the possibility that the universe is actually a hologram, but not just a hologram, but it could be a flat hologram. Now, holograms are really interesting because you take any kind of a two-dimensional, like, let's say, a piece of plastic or something, and you use a laser to form the data on this thing, and then you shine a light, presumably another laser, through that, and it creates what we, what we know as a three-dimensional hologram. Now, uh, this is pretty interesting. The recent paper applies aspects of a deep physical principle to probe the earliest moments of the universe. And it says, uh, Democritus and the title of Thomas Friedman's bestseller might have gotten it right after all, but it's the universe, not the Earth, that might be flat. So that might make some of our uh, flat Earth uh, people quite happy. It's a two-dimensional hologram, according to an international team of researchers. Holograms might be most familiar as the colorful 3D images used as security measures on some credit cards and currencies, but of course they're not really three-dimensional, are they? They contain all the information necessary for our eyes to perceive them that way, but the pictures are actually printed on a 2D surface. A new calculation published last Monday in Physical Review Letters says that models describing our early universe, universe similarly have now been shown to agree with recent observations just as well as standard 3D models do. It's really interesting that it seems that the majority of uh, theoretical physicists now all tend to agree that our universe could actually be a hologram. Isn't that a weird thought? A hologram. In other words, it's not quite all real. I mean, it is real in one sense, but it's like a hologram. So the sticking point, they say, is gravity. Ever since Einstein's general theory of relativity describing described the force that keeps our feet on the ground as a consequence of the shape of space. It's been giving physicists headaches. Other forces, including electromagnetism, can be explained in terms of particles. Magnets may seem to be magically tugging at each other from a distance, but at some level they're swapping photons. Gravity has vigorously resisted this kind of particle level description, giving rise to exotic theories of quantum gravity such as string theory. One proposed bridge between these odd theories of gravity and more established quantum theories of particles accomplishes lots of wonderful things, writes particle physicist Rafael Buoso of the University of California at Berkeley in an email to the Christian Science Monitor. On one of them, uh, excuse me, one of them is that it makes the holographic principle manifest, he writes. As he explains that the recent paper, which was not involved with, borrows some tools from this theoretical bridge and applies them to the early moments after the Big Bang. Now, we'll just uh, substitute Big Bang there for you know, God actually making it, all right? In the universe's first moments, it was expanding so rapidly that the standard bag of tricks may not apply if their assumptions hold true. Light emitted during this expansion still exists today, but it has been distorted by the expanding universe. Light waves that once span nanometers, less than one ten thousandth the diameter of a strand of hair, have had the wavelengths stretched a thousand times longer into the micrometer range where we can detect them as a cosmic microwave background, omnipresent radiation that contributes to the snowy static scene on the untuned television. Those distortions of the Big Bang's afterglow still contain hints as to what the early universe was like, including whatever exotic physics might have been going on in the very beginning. So it's of great interest to physicists. The European Space Agency's Planck satellite, whose mission ended in 2013, provided the most detailed observations to date. Now, again, I'm interested in creation from a biblical point of view. What does this have to do with that? Well, it's not to say that all these guys have their conclusions absolutely correct, and they're not even claiming that. But what they're doing is they're looking at the evidence that we have, and they're trying to understand it. Now, of course, their starting position is is that this thing called the Big Bang, which kind of just happened. But, you know, when God spoke, there was sort of a Big Bang in a sense. Uh, it wasn't as many of the uh, 
Big Bang theorists would actually suggest that there was nothing and then it exploded and how, you know, where did it come from? If you have God as the mechanism for such an event, then it becomes a little bit more plausible and then understanding it through the lens of the Bible, uh, never compromising on the Bible, but saying, you know, you're calling it Big Bang, I'm calling it God spoke. Uh, maybe we can find some common ground there. All right, that's what we're trying to do is can we find common ground. And if we look, if we ask, if we consider, sometimes we actually can. Uh, I'm still not convinced that the universe is 15 billion years old, but I, I did have a thought about this, that maybe when we understand how time, uh, there's something called time dilation, and the further you get away from the center of gravity, the faster time actually goes. Now, this has been proven. Uh, this is, of course, based on Einstein's theory of relativity. But th this is something very true because when, uh, when rocket scientists put rockets into space, they have to adjust for the apogee of the rocket because the clocks on the rockets are actually ticking a little bit faster than the clocks back here on planet Earth. So there, that is a real phenomenon that it has to be accounted for. So we do see something called time dilation. And we actually know that the clock over at Greenwich, England, it's an atomic clock, versus the one uh, not too far from me in Boulder, Colorado, there's another atomic clock, that they are actually ticking at a little bit different speeds, okay? Uh, it's very, very minute. It's only one uh, nanosecond per year. Um, so it's not a big deal, but there is still a difference. It's noticeable. It's measurable. So we know that time dilation is real. The further you get away from the center of gravity, the faster time seems to tick. And so it could be that as the scientists... Are, and the astrophysicists are looking at the universe and they're saying it's awfully big. Um, you know, light only travels so fast and we can look out to the edges of the known universe and it, it what appears to be about 15 billion years out there, or light years out there, how would we get out there? How would light get to us in such a short amount of time? Again, time dilation could be the mechanism that could explain that. There's another theory which is that when um, when God made everything there in the beginning, that light was in the form of plasma, that the early elements were in the form of plasma, there was, that is, they're superheated uh, elements, uh, hot, much hotter than steam or anything that you might think of. It's much hotter than any kind of a gas, but it's actually in a fourth state of matter known as plasma. And in that fourth state of matter, light behaves in a very different, um, very different uh, mode. And so light could have traveled much, much faster at that time if it were, in fact, plasma. So the idea here is not that we have all the answers, but that we can look for the answers. And what I find very fascinating about this idea of the holographic universe, uh, you know, not that I believe in the 15 billion as they state it, but that we might find some common ground. And I just encourage you to do the same thing. The article goes on to say, scientists have continued to analyze data from the Planck satellite, and in this new paper, researchers argue that their holographic model of the universe was consistent with cosmic inflation. Uh, lead author Niyayesh uh, Shorty of Waterloo University, the Perimeter Institute for Theoretical Physics, tells a monitor in a phone interview, or at least as consistent as the pop more popular three-dimensional model. Future data may tell a different story, but for now, there isn't enough information to suggest one model over another. If their theory proves correct, it could imply that one of the dimensions we experience is extra, like depth in a hologram. It isn't really there in some sense, but rather emerges from our perception of a more fundamental flat structure. Again, it doesn't mean the Earth is flat. Uh, what they're talking about flat as being two-dimensional. Now, there is uh, really nothing that is two-dimensional, so to speak, in this world that we live in. And let me just explain. Uh, for example, here, if we take uh, the back of this book, so this piece of paper is itself three-dimensional. But the information contained herein is actually on a two-dimensional plane. So if I just ignore that third dimension as it's going down, giving it depth, and I'm only con um, considering this portion 
of the book, then that is actually a two-dimensional space. But of course, it cannot exist all by itself in our three-dimensional world. It has to be uh, on some kind of a three-dimensional medium, but we can understand that two-dimensionality of it. But um, but this is actually talking about something with, that would exist in a two-dimensional field. All right, so it's 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 other than this three-dimensional universe that we understand, and that's what's so interesting about that. Uh, could God have worked that way? No, it's very possible. Uh, you know, God can do all kinds of cool stuff. The idea of going from two dimensions and then projecting out some kind of a three-dimensional holographic universe is pretty interesting. He says the idea is similar to that of ordinary holograms where a three-dimensional image is encoded in a two-dimensional surface, such as in the hologram on a credit card. However, this this time the entire universe is encoded, explained Professor of Mathematical Sciences Kostas Skenderis at the University of Southampton in a press release. Of the team's approach, Dr. Buoso says that adapting some mathematical ingredients of a quantum gravity framework fit our u early universe may or may not be the right thing to do, but emphasizes that even if it isn't, that would only mean the universe is not the particular kind of hologram they propose. The word holographic gets tossed around in science fiction, but the general holographic principle has nothing to do with the Star Trek or the idea that our universe is actually a computer simulation and is quite well established. Now, there are people that actually think that this, this basically is a type of simulation. Uh, again, which is very fascinating, because if it's a simulation, who is the simulator, right? Uh, well, presumably th that would be God. He's the one that encoded everything uh, for it to be the way that it is. Well, we already know, they say, that the universe has a hologram, Bosa says. It, it applies not only to the observed universe, but to your room, the interior of a black hole, and any other realistic situation we can imagine. He refers to the surprising fact that information capacity depends on the flat surface area surrounding a volume rather than the volume itself. Now, again, what's interesting about this is that a hologram, here in, in the sense of, he just said, information, okay, information is very different than space-time, right? So it's a very different starting point. And I can't help but think of the Bible when it says, in the beginning, God said, let there be right, light, right? So, you know, God created the heavens and the earth, right? So we get this idea of this creation where he creates a space and he creates some kind of a medium. And then what does he do? He speaks, right? He gives information. That is what I find so interesting is that God is the giver of information. And inf information, by its very nature, is a non-material entity. So again, I don't see that we're too far apart from the biblical model and perhaps this holographic model. They both are starting with information, and that is quite exciting. So he says, uh, put another way, doubling the side length of a cube only increases the maximum information inside by four rather than the logical eight. Say you're allowed to bring a note card of information into an exam with you. Wanting to maximize your advantage, you'd logically use a sharp pencil and write as small as possible. Even better, if the rule specified only the size of your learning aid, you could bring an SD card loaded with digital textbooks instead. In daily life, how much information we can store depends heavily on the medium we use to store it. But the holographic principle establishes a natural limit to our information packing games. Eventually, if we cram enough SD cards into our exam room, the pile will collapse under the weight of information you can gather in place. Turns out to depend not on the volume of the room, as one might logically expect, but somehow the surface area of the classroom. Even more shocking, the, cal the calculations make no assumptions about what's inside the classroom or what the ultimate nature of reality is. Atoms, quarks, or superstrings, it's medium agnostic. The principle has proven true for every situation in which it's been tested. But no one knows why. It's a very overarching, mysterious pattern that I don't think we've even scratched the surface of, Bosa said in a 2006 lecture, lecture. Any unifying theory of physics should explain the underlying reason for it. Once we have a proper quantum theory of gravity, it will make this pattern seem perfectly obvious, he continued. This baffling concept of being able to capture all the information of a 3D volume with 
only its flat surface lies at the heart of the holographic principle, and its ability to sidestep sticky issues like what exactly is inside the box makes it a valuable tool for physicists trying to probe inaccessible areas of the universe. In the case of the early universe, both our theories of gravity and quantum particles run into the problems, but as Dr. Afshorty puts it, the holographic principle really gives us a way to get around that, even if you have no idea what the theory of quantum gravity is. He takes a humble philosophical view of his team's efforts to apply the mathematics of holography to the unknowable early moments of the cosmos. All right, well, interesting stuff there. You can check that out at uh, csmonitor.com and to get a uh, more of the story. But again, the whole point here is to try to understand the Bible in relation to science. It's not to compromise the Bible. It's not to say, well, you know, they say, so therefore we have to uh, always accept what they say. Not at all. It's to say they're looking for truth. We believe the Bible is truth. Is there a way that we can understand these two? Maybe it's just a matter of understanding their terminology and getting familiar enough to know what they're saying and then understanding how that just might fit in to the Bible. I personally believe that God created the world about 6,000 years ago. You know, maybe 10,000 if you stretch it a bit. But looking at the, the, the Bible as my source of truth, then that is the number that I come up with. How I can fit in these larger numbers, well, that would take some... Um, it would take some understanding, that would take some thinking, and it's possible. I'm not, I'm not caving in here. I'm just saying it's at least possible that it might be just a matter of time dilation. It might be a matter of understanding their terms, or maybe there's some other key. I still think, according to the Bible, the earth is relatively young, uh, at least in God's point of view. Uh, I'd say in man's as well. But then how to understand some of these other things is something interesting and it requires Christians to go into the field of science to try to understand these things to understand how it can all fit together well guys keep studying the Bible until next time I'm Doug Ham make sure to subscribe and share and like God bless you